Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, my name is Dr. Muhammad Latif and I am your instructor of the subject Principle of Animal Life 2. Today is the lecture number 14 in which we will talk about recombinant DNA technology. What is a recombinant DNA technology? Uh, recombinant DNA technology is a major DNA based tool that opens a new age for modern biotechnology and the first concept for recombinant DNA technology came from came from Werner Albers discovery of restriction enzymes in bacteria that degrade foreign viral DNA molecule we'll talk about uh, in detail about the restriction enzymes and from this discovery uh, genetic, uh, genetist learned to cut and paste DNA molecule and novel restriction enzymes for cutting and pasting were discovered or invented and the development of recombinant DNA technology was advanced by the collaboration of Stanley Cohen and Herbert Boyer in 1972. They also established the first company that focused on recombinant DNA technology. And with the help of this technology, a gene or multiple genes can be identified, cut and inserted into the genome of another organism using this technology the first drugs of medical biotechnology were produced namely human insulin before uh, this technology the human ins uh, the insulin can be obtained from goats sheep or from cattle so with this technology the human insulin can be obtained from bacteria. And what are the steps in recombinant DNA technology? There are five steps or process in recombinant DNA technology. Number one is uh, the step in which we cut the desired DNA by, restriction, by restriction sites. And the other step in which we amplify the gene copies by PCR. What is PCR? It is a polymerase chain reaction in which we make multiple copy of a single gene. Amplifying means copying or increase the number of genes and the third step is the inserting the genes into the vectors what are vectors basically the vectors are used for insertion of genes we'll talk about in detail in further slides and then the transferring the vectors into the host organisms at how these vectors are transferred into the host organism and how we can obtain the products of recombinant gene. What is recombinant gene means in which there is two genes attached to them or two genetic material can be attached in a single gene that why, that's why it is called recombinant gene. So firstly, in first step in which we isolate the gene of interest. Isolation of gene from chromosome is one of the basic steps or one of the prime job in genetic engineering because 
firstly we have to identify the gene that which gene is responsible for making a certain kind of protein which we want to make say for example in case of insulin if we want to make an insulin firstly we must know what the segments of dna in a human which make the insulin protein so when we know the segments or way or or a nucleotide sequence we can isolate from the chromosome and there are different uh, ways in which we can isolate the gene of interest firstly the isolation of gene from the chromosomes gene we can be isolated from the chromosome by cutting the chromosome on the hanging sides of the gene and there are special enzymes which is called restriction endonuclease are used to cut the genes they are, these are called molecular scissors because genes are made up of dna and proteins and there are certain enzymes which can cut the genes on a specific sites and restriction endonucleases are the enzymes which cut the gene on the spe uh, specified sequences or we can uh, make uh, yeah we can make uh, chemical synthesis of genes when we know the sequence of gene or the nucleotide we can make in a live in a laboratories because we we'll, uh, we can make the uh, molecules in a laboratory setting so if we know the sequence of nucleotide we can easily make in a laboratory and the other one is making gene from mrna it is very common method of cutting the gene getting the gene in this case gene is synthesized in the laboratory from messenger rna by reverse transcriptase enzyme a enzyme which can make dna from rna so when we use this enzyme it can make uh, dna and from dna we can make a protein or uh, or we can make gene and the other uh, step is the molecular scissors i have a little talk about uh, molecular scissors which is called restriction endonuclease the restriction enzymes are present in bacteria and the bacteria use these enzymes for their own protection against viruses because there are certain kinds of viruses which attack on bacteria and they kill them so when a virus attack on bacteria there are certain kind of enzymes present on the bacteria which are restriction endonucleases which cut the virus dna and when the uh, dna virus is cut it can it is not uh, able to kill the bacteria so basically these are defensive uh, enzymes and this uh, this restriction enzymes cut down the viral dna but they do not harm the bacterial chromosome they restrict the growth of viruses so they are called restriction enzymes why are they are called restriction enzymes because they restrict the growth of viruses and hamilton o smith isolated the first restriction enzymes in 1970 these enzymes cut the dna at the very specific sites and i am showing of dna the restriction enzyme cut the dna at a specific site these are the sites a a t t c uh, this is from 3 prime and 5 uh, prime and to 3 prime and 
so it cut on the g nucleotide and the segment g c t t a are lost and from the opposite side they cut from a a t t c down g so this segment these are the specific segments in the target gene which is called sticky ends so these restriction enzymes cut the genes on the specific site which is called sticky ends e eco r1 is a commonly used restriction enzymes it cuts double strand dna at the specific sequence of bases so a gap is produced in dna and a piece of foreign dna with complementary ends so when a foreign dna with these ends can enter in this gene it can easily join on this sites foreign gene with this end can easily join this segment of gene so when they attach a piece of foreign dna with complementary ends the single strand dna with complementary ends of the two dna molecule is called sticky ends thus they can be bind by a complementary base pairing therefore the restriction enzymes help in the insertion of foreign dna into the vector what is vector vector will carry the desired gene they are considered as the final vehicles that carry genes of interest into the host organism and the most commonly used vectors are plasmid and bacteriophages what are plasmids are basically plasmids are naturally natural extra chromosomal circular dna molecule and it is a most common type of uh, common type of vector plasmid basically these are the this can cause uh, resistance against certain antibiotics and it has a very significant role in bacteria and the investigators discovered plasmid during the study of the sex life of intestinal bacteria escherichia coli they carry genes for antibiotic resistance and fertility and the other vector can be the dna of bacterial viruses the dna of bacterial virus can also be used as a vector for example lambda phage lambda phage attached to a host bacterium the recombinant dna is released from the virus and enters the bacterium and the recombinant dna replicates and many copies of the viruses are formed and each virus is in bacteriophage clone contains a copy of the gene of choice and from uh, that copy we can isolate the gene what is the expression system you can see a human a human cell in which we isolate a gene for growth human growth hormone and there is a restriction uh, enzyme called eco r1 which cut the gene on a specific site and then there is a bacteria in which there is a plasmid and we isolate a plasma plasmid from bacteria and we also cut 
the plasmid to the specific sequence by eco r1 this is basically the enzymes now the gene and the plasmid are come together and because both have sticky ends or the ends which ma match their nucleotides they attach with a complementary nucleotide and in which there is a recombinant plasmid formed and when these recombinant plasmid carrying the human growth hormone are inserted into the bacterium the bacteria self or containing gene of human growth hormone will provide the material for its growth and it will multiply the growth hormone gene and and from them we can isolate it so this is basically the expression system in which we use bacteria for expression of our genes one of the example is the human insulin this is a human cell human dna it can cut to a specific uh, site by restriction enzymes the insulin gene can be cut and plasmid can also be cut by restriction enzymes and the insulin gene and the plasmids are then dna like it seals human gene and plasmid and this is called recombinant dna why this is called recombinant dna because it has one uh, gene from insulin and the other is from bacteria now host cells takes up recombinant plasmid and there is a cloning means there is a multiple copy of this gene and then these gene can be isolated so we can make synthesis of a recombinant dna the bacterial cells are treated with calcium chloride it makes the bacteria member more permeable now the bacterial cells take up recombinant plasmid these bacteria reproduce and bacterial colonies are formed each new cell contain at least one plasmid therefore each clone of bacteria contains the gene of interest and the clone bacteria express themselves and make a product the protein product can be separated from the clone bacteria and the clone genes can be isolated from the bacterial clone for further analysis so this is all about the dna uh, recombinant dna technology and this recombinant dna technology make wonders in genetic uh, in biotechnology and in next lecture i will talk about about the application of genetic technologies uh, in further video will uh, you will see about the process of genetic engineering and this may helpful in understanding the topic one of the first genetic engineering experiments was conducted by stanley cohen and herbert boyer in 1973 they showed that the gene for frog ribosomal rna could be transferred and expressed in bacterial cells The first step was to construct the plasmid vector called PSC101. This constructed vector contained a single site for the restriction endonuclease ECOR1 and a gene for tetracycline resistance. The restriction endonuclease ECOR1 was used to cut the frog DNA into small fragments. Next, the frog DNA fragments were combined with the plasmid vector that had also been cut with ECOR1. The sticky ends of the DNA fragments aligned themselves and the segments were joined together using DNA ligase. 
Some plasmids incorporate genes other than the rRNA gene, and some do not incorporate new pieces of DNA. The plasmids were then transferred into a tetracycline-sensitive strain of Escherichia coli and plated onto a growth medium containing tetracycline. The cells that incorporated the plasmid carrying the tetracycline gene grow and form a colony of cells. Some of these colonies consist of cells that carry the frog ribosomal RNA gene. The researchers then tested the colonies that form after growth for the presence of frog ribosomal RNA.